Seahawks beat the Rams. Let's dive on in. Side, Russell, play fake, steps back, has time, still surveying the field. Now he rolls left, now he scrambles, now he's going to throw to the back of the end zone. Reaching up, making the catch, did he get his feet in again? Touchdown, Seahawks! What a win, what a win, what a win. Well, Greg the Leg Zerlein barely missed a last-second field goal attempt, allowing for the Seahawks to hold on for the victory and still preserve the potential for this season to be truly special. I think if we'd lost this game, you would have not only have seen the Seahawks be on the outside looking in as far as the division goes, but it would have been one hell of an uphill slog to even get to the playoffs. We still have some really tough opponents left on the schedule, as well as we have three 10 a.m. start times, which historically speaking have always been very difficult games to come away with wins on. As well, you would have had two early season home losses, which means we would have had to have gone out on the road and made some hay out there to overcome that. All in all, I think it would have gotten very, very hairy for our Hawks. As it is, we're right there at the top of that division. We're right there in the mix for not only the first round by, but home field advantage throughout the playoffs, which I think is going to be absolutely integral to the Seattle Seahawks getting back to the Super Bowl. It was nice to see Zerline finally prove he is mortal. Since the Rams drafted this guy a couple of years ago, he has been an absolute hawk killer. It seems like he's always hitting multiple field goals every single game. He's hitting them from 50 yards out like it's nothing. We had one game a couple of years ago where neither the Seahawks nor the Rams could move the football. This guy had three 50-yard plus kicks in one game, and it was the difference. He basically almost single-handedly beat us that day on his own. So it's nice to see that he actually finally can miss against us, and it happens to go on a game winner nonetheless. So I was overjoyed to see that. We got a little bit lucky in that respect to a degree, but I'll take it nonetheless. It seems it's going to be a common refrain on these episodes throughout the season that I say Russell Wilson played brilliantly, some of the best of his career. Every game this season, he appears to be outdoing himself. And remarkably, he appears to have taken his game to yet another level. He has always throughout his career gotten incrementally better, going from a game manager to an impactful player. But now we're seeing him as truly an MVP caliber player. Certainly those of us in the Pacific Northwest have clamored for him to be an MVP candidate in the past. But what you're seeing now, and certainly what this game did, is nationally he is being truly recognized as a potential guy who could take it if Mahomes falls off in any way, shape, or form. And I think it's nice to see because there's always been these last few vestiges of those haters out there that just never could be converted over into believing Russell was truly a great quarterback. They sort of clutched onto their pearls and said, there's no way this short guy is that good. He just can't be that good. And you finally see them, even if it's just this game, it feels like they have finally relinquished that hold and said, no, he is legitimately that good. We've got to give him the props. And I truly believe he is right in it for the MVP conversation. Now he can step up. Now he's going to throw. Wide open. Disley makes the catch inside the 15-yard line. Two players that I haven't mentioned enough about on these episodes are Tyler Locke and Will Disley, who are both playing out of their minds. Tyler has been everything that we hoped. He's taken over the reins for Doug Baldwin if he didn't already do it last season when he was absolutely nearly perfect as a player. He has been uh, on pace to set personal bests in receptions, yards, touchdowns. The toe drag catch was absolutely amazing. Could become the NFL catch of the year when it's all said and done. And even beyond that, there was another play where he came off the line of scrimmage and was covered initially by Clay Matthews. He then ran a secondary route where he ran a dig into an out. And in that time period, you had a Russell Wilson back there just bouncing back and forth until he got clear of the pocket. And Tyler was right there for him, wide open. These guys are just completely on the same page. They both know exactly what the other is going to do. And it seems like it's at times, especially if Russell can get out of the pocket, almost unstoppable to cover Lockett. Disley on the flip side of this has been playing equally well. This guy came in and is supposed to be a blocking specialist out of the University of Washington, but he has been an absolute force 
as a receiver. I don't know if he's had a drop yet this season. His hands are sticky. He is able just to seemingly use that big body to keep it away from the defender. And it further illustrates how good Russell fits with those big bodied wide receivers. We've already seen him do well with DK, but we're also seeing it here with Disley as well, where he really tr throws those trust throws in there and it gives his guys a chance to catch it if he thinks they have those opportunities to pick it away from a smaller defender. And right now when you get Disley matched up on a, let's say a safety as he was on, on that one catch that came up over his head, it's a mismatch. The guy seems to have upper level, upper level athleticism to get away in routes, and he's a good route runner along with great soft hands for a big man, which is exactly what you want out of those big tight ends. The Seahawks are in a really nice position after this win. You got 10 days until your next game to rest and get well. You've got the Browns, who are going to be your next opponent on this Sunday. they got to play on Monday night, so they're going to have a shortened week to get to you on Sunday. Granted, it is a 10 a.m. game, and those tend to be a little difficult for our Hawks traditionally, but still, you're in a good position to come away with the win on that. I look at the Browns, and they seem a little bit limited in the passing game. They want to try to run the ball on you first and foremost, whereas the Seattle Seahawks seem to be one of the better teams in the league right now at stopping the run. As well, we're just one short game away from getting Jaron Reed back. It seems like this is a pretty decent defense of line, but if there is one place that we seem to be struggling in right now, it's generating pressure. Bringing back a guy who got 10 and a half sacks last year from the defensive tackle position, you would hope, would help those numbers out. I still maintain that I would like to see Schneider, if there is any deal out there on the table to be made, especially to get defensive line help, I would be in favor of him going out and getting it. You still have the first two second round picks. You're going to get a third round compensatory pick back. Use some of the ammunition if one of these teams like the Broncos out there is saying, hey, fire sale, come get a guy. Because I think we do need to get a little bit better in the pass rushing game. I still believe that Clowney and Ansaw will continue to develop and get better as the year goes on. Rasheem Green's look pretty good. You've even gotten some pass rush at times from guys like Al Woods and Quentin Jefferson. But this team, as I've maintained for many episodes prior, has got to be fantastic on the front four because we are not fantastic on the back end. And our coverage schemes are not super overly complicated to where they can cover up for some of the inadequate we have on a talent side of things in that secondary. We've got to get pass rush. We've got to get to the quarterback. And right now, so far this year, we're just not getting enough consistent pass rush. And that is going to be a problem when you get into playoff time. Zerline almost always money. Gets this one away. It's up. And it's so good! Greg Zerline misses it! There's something spooky going on down there in the northern end of Century Link. Since this stadium's opened up in 2000, we've seen some oddities occurred when the opposition is attempting to win the football game down there on that end. I did a great Seahawks moment video with the Giants in 2005, where their field goal kicker missed three field goals attempts at the end of the game, two in the fourth quarter, one in overtime, at the north end of the field. Now as well, you've got the fail Mary play with the Seahawks happened at the north end. You've got the can chancellor punch out play against the Detroit Lions from a couple years ago where Calvin Johnson was running into the end zone and Cam just happened to knock it out right there at the end. Happened on the north end. As well, this even has kind of afflicted the Seahawks a bit because you look at 2017, Blair Walsh missed a game winning kick where at that north end. So where I'm leading with this, of course, is whether it's eeriness, spookiness, new agey, gobbledygook, whatever be the case. If I'm Pete Carroll, when I'm deciding at the start of the game on a coin flip, which side of the field I want my team to start out on, I'm picking the side of the field that's going to end with the opposition having to finish the game going into that northern end of the end zone. It seems like a little tiny thing, but something odd's happening there. I don't know what it is, but I'll take it regardless. Bert's one of Paul's best friends. They work, they work together. Um, but the thing about Paul, if you guys didn't know him, you know, to think about creating Microsoft, to think about changing the world, to make a difference, you know, you got to believe big, man. You got to think big. You got to believe big. And that's the that's the that's the truth that Paul did. Uh, I'm grateful that he gave me an opportunity. I'm grateful that he gave all of us an opportunity. You know, and that's real. And that last kick, I think he little. <laughs> little to the right. Yeah. All right, hell of a win. Well, I'll tell you, it's going to be fun to watch this team continue to grow throughout the rest of the season. It always seems like Coach Carroll's teams continually get better as the year goes on. So it looks like nothing but potential ahead of us. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. It does help the channel grow tremendously. 
And don't ever forget, go Hawks.